Hello students, I am Hema Rajesh, tutor for biology. Today I will be covering cell, the unit of life. Before I start, briefly I will run through how to access revision notes and test in ClaySix. Open the webpage, web page, then go to practice, click on practice. Choose your package. You have a lot of packages here, so you can choose. I am choosing NEAT Premium. So when you look at this, there are tests, chapter wise tests for all the subjects and NEAT full tests. Now let me click on uh, biology for grade 11. Here you will find chapter wise uh, test and there are many tests depending upon the complexity of the lessons and also its importance in uh, NEAT exams so that it will help you to gain an, uh, gain an understanding and thorough knowledge of uh, NCRT syllabus. And here you are finding a lot of bubbles. So the green bubble shows that you have completed the test, but you can revisit the test again. Suppose you have scored less in the first test. You want to improve your score. You can come and retake the test to see how you have improved. If it is a blue bubble, it shows that you have not taken the test yet. And this R red bubble is a randomized test. If you have completed the lower levels and you want to see after uh, as a part of your revision, you can come here and click it and uh, take the test to see where you stand. If it is an LO test, it means you have not completed the test. Maybe you would have started the test after three or four questions. You would have realized you are yet to prepare for the in the chapter for the test. And so you may discontinue the test. Then it shows an LO bubble and you can get back again and continue from where you have stopped. Now you see a, a revision notes here. If you click on this, a PDF will pop up and that will take you to the revision notes. Now, I'm sure you all would be wondering how the neat papers would be there. So for you, you have to first understand the framework and biology. All of the, your seniors would have said NCRT is the Bible for you for biology and you can score maximum marks. Many students ask, is it uh, necessary that we memorize line to line in the test which is impossible but one thing is by taking these tests we have created the tests in such a way that you automatically get to know about the important details which you would tend to miss while you are reading and preparing for your test uh, for your test in the form of questions so that is why this would be an uh, ideal way to get in uh, take a package and do your testing for adequate preparation now in the NEAT, if you look at 68 to 70 questions are directly from NCRT. If you are meticulously prepared, it will be easy for you to score. And the next 8 to 10 questions will be modified questions or questions without any modification from previous year's papers. That is the reason, again, we have made an earnest attempt to see that. That is also taken care by having past papers included. And finally, the last 8 to 10 questions will be new questions, which will be for the first time appearing in the NEET. This happens every year, and those questions become the game changers. Though these questions may appear for the first time, they are still, you will be confined only to the NCRT syllabus. It will not be outside the NCRT syllabus or outside your textbook. But all it requires is your application. If you feel by mugging, you will be able to do. It is not possible. It only requires a lot of application to help you the uh, to help you prepare thoroughly and score high. We have taken the uh, effort to see that all kinds of questions are put for you in the practice test. Now let us get back to the revision notes. Now you know that it is not possible for us to uh, re re revise everything. That is all the ten books of uh, first year and second year physics, chemistry, and biology when neat exams are appearing. For that, you need to have a comprehensive notes that will really help you to identify the key concepts which requires revision again and again. Keeping in view all these things, we have come out with a PDF which is less than 135 pages and I'm sure it would be a great asset if you are able to add this to your raw study material. Now let me get on to the lesson, the cell, the unit of life. Now what is the structural and functional unit of an organism? 
obviously the answer would be cell as all organisms are composed of cells some are composed of single cell and are called unicellular organisms while others are composed of many cells and are called multicellular organisms anton van leeuwenhoek was the first to see and describe the live cell robert who discovered the nucleus due to the advent of availability of newer tools and techniques scientists were able to study the ultra structure of the cell and the, thus the branch of biology dealing with the cell its structure and function expanded into cytology now let us look at cell theory now in 1838 the year is important matthias schleden a german botanist examined large number of plants and came to a conclusion that all plants are made up of cells similarly theodor schwann a british zoologist reported the presence of plasma membrane schleed in animal cells schleden and schwann together formulated the cell theory however this theory could not explain the formation of new cells later rudolf virchow explained cells arise from pre-existing cells in his famous statement omnis cellula 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 e cellula that is finally the cells arise from pre-existing cells finally the modern theory was proposed which is understood by all of us as the following all organisms are composed of one or more cells and life processes of metabolism and heredity occur within these cells cells are the smallest and basic unit of organization of all organisms cells arise only by division of previously existing cells now we have already studied in classification how is that as biological classification how cells are classified or how organisms are classified now let us look at a broad view you know there are two kinds of cells prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell we have put under each head what are the important things you have to know now let us look into what are prokaryotic cells a cell that lacks a membrane bound organelle and a well defined nucleus is a prokaryotic cell a cell that has well defined nucleus and membrane bound organelles is an eukaryotic cell now let us look at the prokaryotic cells prokaryotic cells are represented by bacteria blue green algae mycoplasma and pplo they are generally smaller and multiply more rapidly than the eukaryotic cells they all vary greatly in shape and size the organization in prokaryotes is fundamentally similar even though they exhibit wide varieties of shapes and functions all prokaryotes have a cell wall surrounding the cell membrane except in mycoplasma cytoplasm forms the matrix of the cell genetic material are not enveloped by the nuclear membrane many bacterial cells have plasmids apart from genomic dna prokaryotes lack the organelle seen in eukaryotes mesosomes that are the infoldings of plasma membrane are seen in the prokaryotes now let me show you the slide of a prokaryotic cell this is the structure of a prokaryotic cell now here you look at the bacterial cell now you will be finding out it has got cell envelope and its modifications cell envelope consists of tightly bound three layered structure that is glycocalyx followed by cell wall and the plasma membrane glycocalyx cell wall plasma membrane is the order remember gcp so though these layers have distinct functions they all function as a single unit like glycocalyx enables certain bacteria to resist phagocytic action of wbc and it also enables bacteria to adhere to environmental surfaces like rocks root hairs and teeth to colonize and resist flushing cell wall you know it provides the structural support to the cell plasma membrane is a selectively permeable membrane allowing entry and exit of molecules now mesosomes help in cell wall formation can you see the imaginations of the cell membrane plasma membrane here and this is the mesosome 
so it helps in dna replication and distribution to daughter cells these mesosomes help in respiration secretion process to increase the surface area of the plasma membrane and enzymatic content bacterial cells may be motile or non motile bacterium flagella so if you look at the bacterium flagella it has got a basal body it has got a hook and a filament that is the three parts filament is the longest portion and extends from the cell surface to the outside now you can also find certain structures called phyle in the bacteria this is the pilus and the fimbriae which are found in the bacteria though they lack any role in mobility they are uh, uh, involved the with uh, phyle is involved during reproduction now if you look at the structure of phyle phyle is made up of a special kind of a protein fimbriae are small bristle like fibers jetting out of the cell and fimbriae helps the bacteria to attach to rocks and streams and to the tissue of the host so this is diagram is very important in the past papers they have asked questions based on this diagram to identify the parts or to they would have given the part and associate the function with it now ribosomes and inclusion bodies ribosomes and prokaryotes are associated with the plasma membrane they range in size from 15 nanometer to 20 nanometer in size and have two subunits now if we look at the so if we look at the subunits the problems will be arising because if you look you might be thinking it has got 50s and uh, 30s subunit you might be thinking what is that 50s and uh, what is that uh, 30s but these are the subunits and s is to do with the swedberg unit named after the discoverer so if you look at the ribosomes there the larger subunit is called as the s ribosome and smaller subunit is called as 30s ribosome but together the ribosome is of 70s type so prokaryotic cells have 70s type of the ribosome which you have to be aware of now in prokaryotic cells also ribosomes take part in uh, protein synthesis and uh, it is many ribosomes may attach to a single mrna and form a chain called as the polysome or the poly ribosome so all the functions whatever i am mentioning here this will be summarized here very quickly for you to revise now if you look at the inclusion bodies it includes reserve food materials like phosphate granules glycogen granules and uh, chlorophycin granules and they all act as the reserve food materials they all act as the reserve food materials now let us look at the eukaryotic cell structure now are these are found in the members you know that we have already discussed prokaryotic cell structure seen only in the kingdom monera from protista to kingdom which is surrounded by and the genetic material is found in the nucleus now let me look at the functions now let us look at the cell membrane so the first uh, thing for you to look at is the cell membrane now all cells are bounded by a thin delicate structure called the plasma membrane it is living and selectively permeable though there are different models being proposed for plasma membrane the one put forth by singer and nicholson is widely used because this model is able to explain both the structure and function of plasma membrane now let us look deeper into this model so before i get into the singer and nicholson's model let me explain to you briefly about how the model of plasma membrane has been visualized based upon its chemical constituents so chemically it is made up of lipids proteins and carbohydrates in lipids if you look phospholipids are the prominent lipids 
polar hydrophilic and as glycerol backbone and two fatty acid tails are present that are non polar and hydrophobic now if you look at proteins there are two types of proteins seen one is extrinsic protein and the other is intrinsic protein intrinsic proteins are the ones that can be easily extracted from the plasma membrane and intrinsic proteins they are found deeper inside and they cannot be extracted easily carbohydrates are formed attached either to the lipids to form glycolipids or to proteins to form glycoproteins in this model sorry in this model phospholipid bilayers are polarized so that the polar and hydrophobic ends are directed outside one faces the outside and other faces the interior of the cell of the cytoplasm the polar and the hydrophobic fatty acid tails project inwards so as to face each other so this diagram is very important they might give you this diagram and put a b c d and ask you to identify now let me describe the arrangement of proteins in singer and nicholson model the, if you look at the intrinsic proteins are found both on the outer and on the inner side of the phospholipid bilayer the intrinsic proteins are embedded deep in the bilayer proteins and lipids exhibit so semi solid and semi liquid with uh, properties with mosaic pattern so you are aware of what is a mosaic that is you would have seen the mosaic tails where it is hazy in the same way this also looks the same and that's why it is called as a fluid mosaic model some of the globular proteins embedded here and there in the membrane project on both the sides and these are called transmembranal proteins they may form a channel through which certain materials can pass only the external surfaces various kinds of carbohydrates are found they are found attached to the lipids and proteins to form glycolipids and glycoproteins now let us look at the functions of the plasma membrane see this is very very important it maintains the shape and the form of the cell marks the boundary of the cell and acts as a barrier between the extracellular and intracellular fluids it is extremely sensitive and it is responsible for the movement of the cells plasma membrane is a selectively permeable membrane you should realize it it is important because it allows only certain substances to enter in and it does not allow all the substances to enter that is why permeable membrane so it acts as a bodyguard now it takes part in the movement of molecules by diffusion osmosis and active transport now the next organelle we are going to look is the endoplasmic reticulum now endoplasmic reticulum this is the diagram they have given in the textbook i have put to explain what are cisternae cisternae are structures that are flattened like this vesicles look like this and tubules look like this now endoplasmic reticulum was first noticed by porter in 1945 please make a note of the person who noticed this is very important they might ask it was seen by porter it is highly membranous structure with fine network of reticulum having interconnecting tubules from the nucleus to the margins of the cell endoplasmic reticulum is found in almost all the cells except the mature rbc of mammals structurally it exists as cisternae vesicles and tubules cisternae are in the form of flattened sac like unbranched tubules vesicles are in the form of oval membrane bound vacuolar structures tubules are in the form of branch structures forming a reticular system along with cisternae and the vesicles now if you look at the membrane of endoplasmic reticulum it is also made up of proteins and lipids it is referred to as the unit membrane some of these membranes have tiny granular particles called ribosomes attached to it when the ribosome is attached to it it is called rough endoplasmic reticulum and those without ribosomes are known as smooth endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes will also occur freely in the cytoplasm now let us look at the functions of endoplasmic reticulum endoplasmic reticulum forms a cytoskeleton and provides mechanical support for the matrix helps in the transport of materials from the nucleus to the outside endoplasmic reticulum provides an increased surface area for enzymatic activities like protein synthesis 
Now, smooth endoplasmic reticulum helps in the assemblage and storage of lipids and carbohydrates. Rough endoplasmic reticulum takes an active part in protein synthesis. It helps in the formation of micro bodies and vesicles. It also helps in the formation of nuclear membrane during cell division. So these points are very, very important for endoplasmic reticulum functions because they may put some of the functions and ask you to identify the functions of the endoplasmic reticulum. Now the next one is the ribosomes. So in the previous thing, you prokaryotes, I showed you about, I talked about 70S ribosomes. Here in uh, this one, you will be finding 80S ribosomes. Ribosomes in animals was first reported by Pallid. They are small globular submicroscopic particles of ribonucleoprotein. Ribosomes are assembled in the nucleoli. They are made up of proteins and ribosomal ribonucleic acid in almost equal ratios. They are found either freely scattered in the cytoplasm or they will be found attached to the endoplasmic reticulum and they vary in number. The 80S ribosomes will have a larger subunit of 60S and smaller subunit of 40S. The ribosomes remain attached to the endoplasmic reticulum through the 60S subunit. 40S subunit occurs on a large unit and it forms a cap-like structure. Now let us look at the functions of ribosomes. So you know the only function of ribosome is it helps in protein synthesis. Now the next is Golgi apparatus. Now Golgi complex was first discovered by Camillo Golgi, an Italian cytologist, and it is named after the discoverer in 1998. They are present in almost every cell except in prokaryotes and few eukaryotic cells like RBC and mature sperms. So the cells that lack Golgi complex, the question can be asked. It is human RBC and also in the mature sperms. The number, shape, size and position of Golgi bodies are variable. Electron micrographs have revealed that there are three types of membranes, namely cisternae, tubules and vesicles. I have already discussed how cisternae or vesicles and tubules will look alike for endoplasmic reticulum. Here also it is the same. The membranes of Golgi are made up of phospholipids and proteins. In addition, vitamin C, fatty acids, carotenoids, and other enzymes like ATPase, cytochrome C are present. Now let us look at the functions of the Golgi apparatus. Golgi body serves as a sort of packaging center for the cell. Now synthesis of various types of polysaccharides take place in Golgi complex. It helps in the production of hormones. Acrosome of the animal sperm is derived from the Golgi complex during spermatogenesis, that is during the formation of sperms. Lysosomes are formed from Golgi complex. It secretes the cell wall material in the plant cells. Golgi takes part in cell plate formation during cell division in plant cells. So these points are very, very important and I expect you to make a brief note about it. Now let us go into mitochondrium. So if you look at mitochondrium is the singular and mitochondria is the plural. Kolikar in the year 1880 discovered mitochondria in the muscle cells of the insects. But the term was coined by Benda. So Kolikar discovered mitochondria and the term was coined by another scientist called Benda. They are present in almost all eukaryotic cells but are absent in the prokaryotic cells. Mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cells with integral role in the production of energy. Mitochondria are a double membrane brown structure. The outer membrane is smooth, while the inner membrane, if you see, it's folded into cristae, which extends inwards. So you can see a lot of folds here. These folds are called as the cristae. The space between the outer matrix and the in that is the outer membrane and the inner membrane is called intermembrane space or the perimitochondrial space. The lumen is filled with the matrix. Now, mitochondrial matrix contains lipids, proteins, RNA, circular DNA, ribosomes, respiratory enzymes, etc. They have certain regularly arranged particles called elementary particles or F1 particles or Rackers particles. 
each particle as a head piece a base piece and a stock they are semi autonomous because they have their own internal genetic system in the form of a closed circle of double stranded dna without any histones so this we will be looking at it when we are doing the chapter on uh, dna now let us look at the important functions of mitochondria so functions of mitochondria mitochondria are the center for biological oxidation so your entire respiration when we do you will understand how mitochondrion plays a very important role in the formation of atp molecules they are the sites of krebs cycle electron transport chain and chemiosmotic phosphorylation the energy released during oxidation is stored in the form of atp in the mitochondria and hence they are also called power house of the cell transport atp molecules to the site of energy requirement so that is one of the major functions now special function is to control the concentration of free calcium ions in a cell the excess calcium ions are stored as calcium phosphate now let us look into lysosomes so this they were discovered by christian d duve in 1955 please make a note of it christian d duve in 1955 there are tiny single membrane bound spherical vesicles found distributed throughout the cytoplasm and in most of the eukaryotic cells the membrane is lipoproteinaceous lysosomes contain only 24 types of hydrolytic enzymes it is believed that enzymes are synthesized by the cell and packaged by the golgi complex packaging is important because if these enzymes are released the cell would be digested hence do we call the mass suicidal bags so what are the functions they are for intracellular digestion they are also to contain the cell to release the energy in starvation and they are suicidal bags and cells will self destroy if they are not functioning well next Sorry, I'm sorry, children. I need to look in here. Okay. Now, if you look at the micro bodies, so these micro bodies. are spherical organelles bound by single membrane the contents are granular they contain the enzyme catalase that breaks hydrogen peroxide and they are the site of glyoxylate cycle in the plants now let us look at uh, centrioles cytoskeleton and all those stuff now if we look at the cytoskeleton it is made up of microtubules and uh, macrofilaments so these help in exocytosis endocytosis cell mobility movement of chromosomes formation of cilia centriole and flagella if you look at uh, cilia and flagella they contain 9 plus 2 structure of microtubules enclosed by the plasma membrane they help in the movement of unicellular organisms and also move the fluids in a particular direction now centriole it is a non membranous uh, structure if you look at centriole it is a non membranous structure present near the nucleus in the animal cell they have 9 plus 0 pattern one thing you have to understand cilia and flagella have 9 plus 2 structure now if you look at centriole it is 9 plus 0 pattern of microtubules this 9 plus 2 and 9 plus 0 is the microtubule arrangement centriole helps in the formation of spindle fibers during cell division in the animal cell and these are absent in the plant cells now let us look at the vacuole now vacuoles are membrane bound space found in the cytoplasm it contains water sap excretory product and other raw materials not useful to the cell the vacuole is bound by a single membrane and it is called as the tonoplast in plant cells vacuoles occupy nearly 90% of the cell volume in a plants tonoplast facilitates the transport of number of ions 
and other minerals against concentration gradient into the vacuole. Hence, their concentration is significantly higher in the vacuole than in the cytoplasm. Vacuoles also have osmoregulatory function. Now, let us look at the cell inclusions. It contains both organic and inorganic uh, crystals found in both plant and animal cells. Stores glycogen granules, fat drop droplets, alluron granules or crystals. Now, let us look at the final person that is the master. The master you know is the nucleus. Now, let us look at the nucleus. The most prominent structure of most of the cells is the nucleus. It was observed by Robert Brown in the cells of the orchids. Nucleus is situated more or less in the center of the cell and it is usually spherical in shape. However, they are lobated in the WBC and kidney shaped in paramecium. The size of the nucleus varies from cell to cell. Electron micrograph studies have shown that nucleus consists of nuclear membrane, nucleoplasm, chromatin network and the nucleolus. So all these parts you can see here. Now let us look at the nuclear envelope. The nucleus is surrounded by a double membrane uh, called as the nuclear membrane. It is made up of proteins and lipids and forms a boundary between the nucleoplasm and the cytoplasm. The outer and inner nuclear membranes remain separated by the perinuclear space. There are perforations in the nuclear membrane and these are called as the nuclear pores. These pores facilitate the movement of molecules between the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Now let us look at the nucleoplasm. The nuclear envelope encloses a transparent semi-solid granular matrix called nucleoplasm or karyolim for karyoplasm. All nuclear components remain suspended in it. Nucleoplasm is chiefly composed of nucleic acids, proteins, enzymes and minerals. Nucleic acids are in the form of DNA and RNA. It is the site for active ribosomal RNA synthesis. Now within this nucleus, let us look at another important structure that is the chromatin or the chromosome, chromatin network. When cells are appropriately strained, network-like structures become visible within the nucleus and it is called as the chromatin network. That is why the name came. Chromosome means chroma is colored, some is a body. So it is a colored body. Chromatin network which has high affinity for stains consists of many threads like coiled and much elongated structures called chromatin fibers. During cell division, the chromatin shortens and thickens forming the chromosome. Now this is the structure of a typical chromosome. The term chromosome was named by Waldier in the year 1888. So Waldier named the term, called it as chromosomes. D. Robertis, he is an uh, important cytologist, a famous cytologist. He has defined chromosomes as a nuclear component endowed with a special organization, individuality and functions. It is capable of self-reproduction and maintains the morphological and physiological characters through successive derivations. So let me repeat the statement. Chromosomes as a nuclear component endowed with a special organization, individuality and functions. It is capable of morphological and physiological characters through successive divisions. The nucleus of all cells has two sets of chromosomes. This number is referred to as diploid number. The chromosomes of a pair are called homologous chromosomes. The size of the chromosomes vary from species to species. Now let us, sorry, let us look at the structure of the chromosome. Each chromosome at metaphase, this is how it looks at metaphase, contains paired sequence of genetic materials called the chromatids. These are called the Chromatids are the arms of the chromosome. They are all joined at some point along their length called the centromere. They are composed of nucleoproteins, proteins in the form of histones and non-histones. The genes which carry which uh, carry the hereditary information are the segments of DNA. Thus, chromosomes serve as carrier of genes from one generation to another. Now, let us look at the classification of chromosomes. Depending upon the position of the centromere, 
chromosomes are classified as metacentric submetacentric acrocentric and telocentric if it is a metacentric chromosome centromere will be almost in the center so that both the arms of the chromosome are almost equal if it is submetacentric it will be slightly away from the center as a result of which you will have slightly larger arm and slightly smaller arm but no much differences okay not very prominent differences as you see in acrocentric chromosome in acrocentric chromosome you will see a centromere lying in such a way that it results in one arm of the chromosome being extremely long and the other arm being extremely short and in telocentric chromosome you will never find a shorter arm the centromere is present at the tip of the long arm now let us look at the functions of the nucleus nucleus controls the various metabolic activities of the cell it allows the free exchange of ions between the nucleus and the cytoplasm nuclear pores are the pathways for nucleocytoplasmic exchange of macromolecules contains dna the genetic material that plays an important role in inheritance and gene expression nucleolus and nucleus is one of the most active sites of rna synthesis nucleus contains nucleolus the main function of the nucleolus is the biogenesis of ribosomes now so if you look at this uh, thing okay this gives you all whatever i have spoken in length to you explaining in detail everything is captured in essence in the form of a graphic organizer now you know what are the different these are the things common in both plant cell and animal cell now let us look at the things that are present in the plant cell now that is important thing is the chloroplast this is the structure of the chloroplast very very important they are the photosynthetic apparatus of the plants chloroplasts are specialized semi autonomous organelles found in the cytoplasm of the cell each chloroplast is bounded externally by unit membranes made up of lipids and proteins internally chloroplast is filled with stroma so this is the matrix is known as the stroma there are disk like structures these disk like structures are called as the thylakoids thylakoids will aggregate to form a hollow structure and that is called as the granum so individual units of granum the thylakoid a granum is composed of 5 to 25 thylakoids and chloroplast contain approximately 40 to 80 grana the adjacent grana are connected by inter a stromal lamellae or intergranum lamellae or frets photosynthetic units called quantosomes are located in the grana lamellae stroma also contains dna rna ribosomes coenzymes and mineral elements like calcium magnesium copper manganese iron etc a single cell may take about 300 chloroplasts chlorophyll and calcium are concentrated in the grana that provide the machinery of the light reaction stroma contains the enzymes of dark reaction and starch grains are synthesized here so this diagram is very important they will ask you to identify the structures or they will ask you to identify the structure and the kind of reaction that gets in whether it's a dark reaction or the site of light uh, reaction which you will be learning in photosynthesis now if you look at this table whatever i have spoken since 40 minutes everything you have and even in your textbook you will be studying around 10 to 12 pages everything is summarized in this pdf that is why i said having this pdf would be a uh, advantage for you to revise it now uh, another thing which is present only in the plant cell is the cell wall so a cell wall is made up of consists of cellulose it is primary wall is formed during cytokinesis secondary wall is due, formed due to the thickening or deposition of uh, lignin and suberin now middle lamella is a thin layer that has calcium and magnesium pectates so this is the diagram of a cell wall so primary wall you know gives the mechanical strength it allows to build the turga pressure and forms the pathway for the movement of water secondary wall helps in lignification that is addition of lignin and suberin chemicals will only provide additional stability to the plant middle lamella holds the neighboring cells together and it also acts as a binding agent of the primary cell wall and the secondary cell wall so this is about the notes now let us take a test
so now let me go to the biology test let me look at the lesson today's lesson is cell the first take a test so again i'm saying look for the timing but for biology if you are prepared it generally does not take much time and from this lesson you will be getting around three questions in your neat regarding reductionist biology choose the incorrect one so miniature forms of organisms are created and studied is incorrect because reductionist biology uses cell free systems to investigate describes various processes in molecular terms and uh, physico chemical approach is uh, applied to study and understand the living organisms so miniature forms of organisms are created and studied is the incorrect choice unicellular organisms are capable of independent existence and performing the essential functions of life regarding cell assertion cell is the fundamental structural and functional unit of all organisms the reason anything less than a complete structure of a cell does not ensure independent living regarding a and r here if you look at assertion and reason assertion and reason are correct and r is the correct explanation for a anton van leeuwenhoek first saw and described a life cell true robert brown later discovered nucleus true regarding one and two both are correct schleden and schwann together formulated the cell theory true this theory explains how new cells were formed from pre existing cells false because it was only rudolf virchow who explained how new cells were formed so one is correct but two is incorrect see such questions help you to understand the ncert textbook better all organisms are composed of cells and products of cells all cells arise from pre existing cells both are correct omnis cellula a cellula means new cells are formed from pre existing cells only cells that have membrane bound nuclei are called eukaryotic cells that lack membrane bound nucleus are called prokaryotic both are correct in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells a semi fluid matrix cytoplasm occupies the volume of the cell in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells because cytoplasm is seen both in prokaryotes and eukaryotes the cytoplasm is the main arena of cellular activities in both plant and animal cells yes various chemical reactions occur in it to keep the cell in living state very true so both are correct see these sentences even you are reading you will not be able to really understand you will just leave it off okay you will not really bother to pay any attention but while doing the test where we have created you will understand what it is and that will help you to prepare for your game changers in this way you are going to have ncert at your fingertips the eukaryotic cells have other membrane bound distinct structures called organelles yes prokaryotic cells lack membrane bound organelles regarding one and two both are correct prokaryotic cells have lysosomes mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum none of the above because they don't have any cell organelles animal and plant cells contain membrane bound organelles called centriole centriole helps in cell division only animal cells contain centriole and plant cells do not have so one is incorrect but two is correct sodium potassium pump is an active transport membrane bound organelles are absent in chlamydomonas saccharomyces plasmodium streptococcus if you look at here chlamydomonas is an algae saccharomyces is yeast plasmodium is a protozoan so they are all eukaryotes streptococcus is a bacteria and it is a prokaryote so streptococcus lacks it so i have completed the test i am ending the test here so all the things are correct 
if at all if anything is wrong it will show me in the red which is wrong and here if you look at the legend you will come to know this this legend will help you to identify if it is incorrect you go and click there you will get the answer your answer will be marked in red so you know the answer and explanation will also be shown why that is the correct answer and now if you have not answered a question because you have not understood an yellow legend the color will be seen in the legend if you click there you will understand what is the answer and what is the explanation for the answer so in this by taking this test it will help you to prepare yourselves better for your neat exams and it is also going to analyze your strengths and weaknesses it will help you to improve so that you are able to score better in the test and exams now if need full tests which are 38 tests in nature if you look at them 15 tests are created by the tutors and 20 tests are solved past your question papers so when you take 38 tests that is all three hours test you every day if you keep taking one one test also it will really help you to improve your scores and i'm sure for the exams you will not have any uh, you uh, fear or anything and you can confidently uh, tackle all the questions in the exams if you have any doubt you can ask additional help by using our ask feature on our site and we support chat group using telegram you can also book slots for one to one teaching with you tutors for any queries mail your query to info@clay6.com thank you